Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new video card from Asus. This is the GeForce GTX 770 DirectCU 2 OC. Here's a quick look at the retail box. Apart from being based on NVIDIA's new GeForce GTX 770 GPU, this card is Windows 8 ready, features ASUS GPU Tweak uh, software for real-time graphics tuning and overclocking, also Digi Plus VRM digital power delivery with super alloy power for stable overclocking. You get a 2 gigabyte GDDR5 memory frame buffer. This card is overclocked from the stock recommended specs of the GTX 770 and it features the direct CU2 GPU cooler which uh, runs well 20% cooler and vastly quieter not to put too fine a point on it here at the back uh, we can see another picture of the cooler right there we can see a little bit more information on the Digi Plus VRMs and we can also see a quick look at the GPU tweak software I'm gonna go ahead and take this card out of the box inside the retail box we have another retail box Inside that we have another box. This box has accessories. I'll just pop that open and we'll take a quick look at those. You get a uh, power connector cable here. This is for PCI Express graphics. This will take two six pin PCI Express graphics connector and combine them together into an eight pin. Uh, this card does have a six pin and an eight pin for power requirements. You also get this disk which has uh, driver and GPU tweak software. You can download uh, the latest versions of the driver from NVIDIA's website. You can also get the GPU tweak software from the ASUS website. We also have an ASUS speed setup guide which is a gen generic graphics card installation guide. If you're not familiar with that you can also check out our how to build a computer video. And then finally we have the graphics card itself. Onto the card itself, I'm starting off uh, with a measurement, as you can probably see. The card measures from the bracket just a, just like a hair or two beyond 10.5 inches, so uh, very reasonably sized, but bear in mind you will need at least that much space inside your computer case in order to fit this card. Uh, back over here to the front so we can get a better look at the custom cooler that ASUS has gone with. Now this is the Direct CU2 cooler. Let me explain. Direct stands for uh, direct uh, contact between the GPU and the heat pipes. CU is copper, and the heat pipes are made of copper. And two indicates that uh, ASUS has worked on this cooler for a couple different revisions now. We uh, first saw it with the 500 series. Uh, they have had some three-slot uh, cooler versions of this. Uh, in fact, more specifically that we saw on the 680 even. Uh, for this 770, you're actually getting a card that is very similar to the 680, but it's kind of been, uh, I don't know, super pumped. I'm just going to make up a word. It's been awesome sauced. <laughs> um, apart from that, uh, the, the, the GPU at the center here is a GK104. Again, that's the same uh, that the, the 680 was based on. It has four graphics processing clusters and uh, eight streaming multiprocessors, or SMX units. Uh, and each of those has 192 CUDA cores, so that gives you 1,536 total. Uh, again, that is the same number that you get with the GTX 680. Uh, differences here are that you do get to take advantage of the NVIDIA GPU Boost 2.0 software, and that's uh, automatic overclocking. It was introduced with the 600 series, and then they went with 2.0 with the GTX Titan. Uh, with 2.0, you get uh, overclocking based on your uh, actual temperature target that you can set in there. Uh, and you can use, of course, software-based overclocking tools to take advantage of GPU Boost 2.0. But it's a very effective m means of overclocking. It's also dynamic, so it's going to um, uh, automatically overclock or underclock depending on the temperature. So make sure that you keep a fair amount of airflow in your computer in order to keep your GPU temperatures lower, and then you'll get uh, more stable, longer-lasting overclocks. Uh, apart from that, you get 128 texture units, uh, 32 raster operators, a base clock of, of 1,058, that's as compared to the reference uh, for the 770, which is 1,046, and a boost clock of 1,110, and that's as compared to the reference, which is 1,085. The memory also, which of which there are 2 gigabytes of GDDR5, uh, is clocked at 7,010 megahertz effective data rate. Um, so extremely fast memory that's actually just about as fast as GDDR5 memory can go and since I'm showing you a look at the back of the card right now I might as well peel this layer off uh, since ASUS has given you a full back plate on the card as well uh, which has a very uh, clean kind of brushed metal look there you get the ASUS Direct CU2 logos and then if you actually had the card installed in your computer you would probably be getting a view of this side of it so maybe a bit of the top if you're looking from 
from, from the top down. You also see the heat pipes coming out here, which have always kind of reminded me of like a, a custom like Harley Davidson or something like that. I don't know. They look pretty cool. But uh, again, the direct CU2 uh, cooler right here, heat pipes transferring the heat from the GPU where it makes direct contact out into the fin arrays. Uh, of the cooler out here, and you'll notice those are on both sides. You have two 75 millimeter fans that are going to be downward firing, pushing air over those. Uh, another feature of the DirectCU2 cooler that ASUS has always um, maintained for all of the versions I've seen is they want to make it fairly easy to disassemble. So uh, it's only held on by four screws right here, mounting points there at the center. It's not bolted on elsewhere, so you can remove those and you can pop the whole cooler off. So you'll notice the only place where it's making contact with directly is right over here. Pop that off and unplug the fan and uh, you can clean it out or if you're interested in, I mean, this is a really good cooler as it is, but if you do, did want to swap it out to go with a water cooling solution or something like that, it makes it very easy to. Uh, apart from that, the board is reinforced by the back plate that's going to help uh, prevent some of the, the droopage and sag that you get from heavier coolers. Uh, it's also got an extra plate right there that's helping, uh, that's got a bit of a radiator on it, so it's going to help provide a bit more cooling for the power delivery components. You can see it right in there. It is black. Um, again, they've also gone with the uh, Super Alloy Power. Uh, you can see the uh, some of the chokes for that right there with the SAP logo on it. Uh, high quality caps, uh, military class components for this. And uh, then also, I want to point out, although you can't see it very much because of the back plate, um, but they have a very nicely colored PCB on there, so uh, keeping everything tidy and matching. Uh, let me pop that up so you can get a better look at the PCI Express connector right there. It is PCI Express Gen 3, so that gives you double the bandwidth of PCI Express Gen 2. Um, I think I was talking about the memory a moment ago and I got distracted, but apart from the speed of 7,010 megahertz, which is extremely fast, it's running on a 256-bit memory interface. It gives you a total bandwidth of 224.3 gigabytes per second. Um, apart from all that, um, I mentioned you get GPU Boost 2.0 with the 700 series. Another thing you get uh, is NVIDIA's new fan profile features. So essentially what this does is to prevent the fan from extremely ramping up or down uh, depending on the temperature of the GPU. It stabilizes it so you don't, you don't get that ramp up and ramp down noise. Um, and uh, it's, it's a very effective means of reducing the noise generated by your graphics card as you are gaming. For power on this particular card, down here at the end you have a 6-pin and an 8-pin PCI Express graphics uh, connector. As previously mentioned, uh, you're going to want a 500-watt power supply minimum uh, for this card in your entire system. Depending on the configuration of your system, I always recommend going a bit beyond that if possible to make sure you have headroom for adding another card in the future. For example, speaking of which, over here at this end you'll notice two SLI fingers. This card is, of course, capable of two-way, three-way, or four-way SLI configurations. Uh, so that, of course, making use of the connectors. Uh, there's the back plates. Am I forgetting anything? I hope not. Oh, yes, I, of course I am. I'm forgetting our video outs right here. Um, maintaining a lot of the features that were introduced with the 600 series, uh, such as higher end uh, or some new, new anti-aliasing techniques, such as TXAA and FXAA. You also get NVIDIA surround capability directly from a single card. So you can actually connect to all four of these connectors and uh, push up to four monitors from the same card. You can use three of them for 3D gaming, gaming and the fourth as a companion display. Uh, for your connectors, you have two dual-link DVI over on this side. The upper one here is digital only. The lower one here is digital and analog, so if you do happen to use a DVI to VGA adapter, use it with the bottom one, not the top. Also over here, you have uh, HDMI, and uh, you also get a full-size display port out, and uh, you can do 2560 by 1600 resolution from the display port as well as the dual-link DVIs. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. One quick correction I need to make. I mentioned a 500-watt power supply recommended. Uh, Asus is actually recommending a 600-watt power supply for this one. I was getting distracted because I've recently been do doing 760 videos. Anyway, uh, apart from that, I might as well also throw in that this card has a TDP of 230 watts. Uh, but that is going to wrap it up. If you'd like to see more tech videos, of course, you can check them out on our new ATV YouTube channel. We've been taking a closer look at the Asus GeForce GTX 770 DirectCU 2 OC. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and we'll see you in the next video.